Good morning. I was in the hallway back by Chris's office earlier, and a gentleman and I were talking, and he said he and his wife were discussing on their way here this morning that I would be preaching, that I would be preaching this morning. And uh, I said, well, the greatest compliment is that you kept driving to the church. <laughs> you didn't turn around and go home. Um, it is good to be here with you this week. It is a busy week for us in the life of Alabama CBF. This is the week of the General Assembly. Um, the National Gathering for the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, and it is taking place in Birmingham. And so we are playing host this week. And so it's very exciting. If you don't have plans on Thursday and Friday, you should get online and check out the the schedule for the assembly and come over and join us uh, for for worship one evening, or if you're available during the day, there's some great breakout sessions. In fact, Barry Howard, I understand, will be sharing at some point during the the General Assembly. I'm not 100% sure, but you could find out online. So the scripture reading this morning is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, and it says this. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And and not only that, we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, And character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. You pray with me. God, we trust in your word that says where two or more have gathered, you will be in our midst. So we know that you are here now. And when we are in the presence of God, we cannot help but be transformed. In Christ, let me pray. Amen. So as has been said many times this morning, it is Father's Day. I heard someone make a joke this week that Father's Day was a holiday invented by Hallmark and the people who make ugly ties and men's razors. Uh, Yesterday, earlier this week, I was watching a commercial, um, a beer commercial actually, Um, because someone had posted it on Facebook and said that if you can watch this and not cry, then you have um, a heart of stone. And I was like, well, challenge accepted. So I I started watching this video, and um, sure enough, by the end of it, I was was teary. And not just because I'm a crier. I mean, I am a crier, but not just because of that, but uh, mainly because this commercial really resonated with my own life story. It was the story of uh, three adult uh, grown children who were sitting with their stepfathers. And it was sort of an interview format. And they talked about, in the process of the couple of minutes, they went back and forth between three stories telling um, about how the relationship had evolved over the years. And about how much the children had come, even in adulthood, to depend upon their stepfathers. And how much they thought of them, even though the relationship started um, as stepfather and stepchild, they had... They were truly thought of them and loved them as their father. And so at the end of the commercial, uh, each of the sets of interview folks surprised the stepfather with adoption papers and said, would you adopt me, become my real dad? And I'll tell you, uh, my whole life growing up, I, I wanted that. The man I will call when I leave here to go home to wish Happy Father's Day is my stepfather. The man I have called dad nearly my entire life, is my stepfather. And I wanted nothing more, my brother and I wanted nothing more when we were growing up than for him uh, to adopt us. We wanted to have his last name. His name is Wayne Nash. We wanted to be Nashes. We went to the Nash family reunion. We wanted to be a Nash. Uh, But my father, my biological father, wouldn't allow it. Uh, He would say, every time we asked, or every time my mom would say, approach the subject with him, he would say, Those are my boys, and I'm not letting them change their name. This father, this biological father who never paid child support, this biological father who was an alcoholic, and because of his alcoholism, couldn't hold down a job. And because he couldn't hold down a job, he couldn't keep a roof over our head. And the reason my mom had to take us somewhere safe This biological father, who, if you've ever seen any television show 
where um, the little kid talks on the phone with the dad, and the dad says, I'm coming to take you to Disneyland, or I'm taking you here or there. And the little kid sits on the curb, you know, all through lunch and then until the sun goes down. That cliche, bad father, that, all those characters are based on my dad. Can I tell you stories about us sitting out with the promised trip here or there? But it's okay. No, it's not okay. But I'm okay. Because I had the grace that came to me in the person of Wayne Nash. My amazing, extraordinary stepfather. Before my parents, before my mom and my stepfather got married, when they were dating, um, Wayne called us. Uh, he said, you're my, you're our, he told Michael and I we were his little buddies. You're my little buddy. And they called his buddy, my little buddy. And we called him our big buddy. And I remember on my, um, my mom's and stepfather's wedding day, we were all getting ready together. I remember Michael and I talked about it ahead of time. And I remember I asked Wayne, I said, so I guess after today, we have to call you dad. And he knelt down. I remember this so clearly. He knelt down and said, you don't have to call me anything. You can call me whatever you want. You will always be my little buddy and I will always be your big buddy. There was another time when we were at church and I was walking to go find my parents. They were upstairs in the education building and I was coming up the stairs and it was one of those stairs that has two two legs to it, so there's a little landing in the middle. And as I started at the bottom of the stairs, I could hear my father's, my stepfather's voice at the top of the stairs talking to one of his friends. And my mom, um, at that point, had one child, and it was a little girl, so I had a sister. And in that moment, my mom, we did just announced she was pregnant with a second child. And it was before we knew the gender. And the friend of my father's, I heard him ask my dad, do you, are you hoping, Wayne, that it's a, it's a boy? I mean, I know you got Heather, a little girl. Are you hoping it's a boy? And this guy knew that Michael and I weren't his biological sons. And before my father could, he didn't know I was there, he didn't see me, he said, why would I want another boy? I already have two great boys. I was his son. Well, we, didn't, we don't share any blood or genetic material, but I was and am his son. And I, from that moment on, wanted to be, and so even though my biological father wouldn't allow it, my brother and I started going by Nash, at school and at church, any place we were, you know, the first day of school when they call roll and they're like, William Bennett, and William raises his hand and says, I go by Will. They would say Lucas Dorian, and I would say, I go by Lucas Nash. And it usually confused the teacher for a couple days, but they let me do it. All my school papers, I have them, several of them um, that I'm most proud of, they say Lucas Nash written on the back of them. So, at the beginning, I made the joke about Father's Day being invented by Hallmark and the makers of bad ties and men's razors. Well, that's not true. You probably know that. But it depends on who you ask. Some will tell you that it was, the first Father's Day was in 1909 in Spokane, Washington. And it was the idea of a, of a woman um, named Sonona Dowd. Her father, uh, her mother had died and left her and her five brothers to be raised by her dad. And Sona wanted to honor her father. So she launched this campaign that they would have a special Sunday in June near his birthday to celebrate him. Celebrate all dads out of gratitude and love. And according to the story, in that year in Spokane, Washington, all the local churches honored, held a Father's Day celebration. And then she proceeded to pursue it nationally. Some people say the story, the Father's Day begins a year earlier in 1908, following the greatest mining accident at the time in U.S. history in West Virginia. And a church there held a Father's Day to remember all the fathers they had lost in the accident and to honor the ones that were still living among us. Regardless of where it began, Father's Day did not become a national holiday until 1972, when President Richard Nixon signed Joint Congressional Resolution 187 into law, which said, we shall hold public and private demonstrations of our abiding love and gratitude for our fathers. But what if you do not have feelings of abiding love and gratitude for your father. I could tell you that having an extraordinary stepfather 
The man who chose me as his son when he did not have to, I can tell you that it washed away all the pain and hurt of a father who didn't want me. But I would be lying to you. I'm comforted that the very history of the holiday is complicated. We don't know where it starts. It depends on who's telling the story and which version you believe. I'm more comforted by Scripture this morning. St. Paul says, and he's talking about salvation and how through our suffering we are more convinced that we are saved. But when I think of my own suffering, I am comforted that Scripture says, although hope is the goal, Suffering first has to become endurance, and then it becomes character, and then it becomes hope. And this hope will not disappoint. But God knew in my humanity it would be a journey. And it is okay that if my suffering is not yet hope, because God has promised love and his spirit every step along the way, And friends, it is okay if your suffering has not yet become hope. If you don't feel happy on Father's Day because you don't know what to think about your own father. If you long to be a father and and aren't. If you miss a father who you love deeply and he is not here, it is okay to feel exactly the way you feel and the God who has promised to walk among us in our, in our joint celebration of worship, that God sits with you and will journey with you as suffering becomes endurance and as endurance becomes character and as character becomes the hope that will not disappoint. So I've given up uh, the, the childhood dream of ever being Lucas Nash. Not going to happen. 41 years old. Although I guess I could do like the beer commercial and surprise him with an adoption paper. But truly, if I'm not completely healed of all the wounds of 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 the life story I've just told you, there are pieces of me that are. My, uh, and I I, I can tell you the day that I got over the adoption piece. It was July 28, 2008. It was the day my son was born. And we gave him three names. We named him Joseph Nash Dorian, and we call him Nash. Joseph, after my father-in-law, who is an extraordinary man, and you're going to invite me back for another sermon on him. I could talk all day about him. But Nash, after my stepfather, and he also carries the name Dorian which was the one I felt stuck with for a long time. It was the name given to me by my alcoholic father. And it was the name given to him by his deadbeat alcoholic father. But every time I look at my son, I think about what the name means. Now, literally, the name Nash means um, from the ash tree, or worker of wood, which is appropriate because my stepfather was a carpenter, but for me, Nash means unconditional love. It's a reminder of a story of a father who loved when he did not have to. And when it's paired with Dorian, Nash becomes this living, breathing reminder of the power of a story of redemption. There is nothing beyond the reach of God's redemption It may not come today, and it may not be tomorrow, but it is coming, it is promised to us, the hope that the love of God is is poured into. It is a promise for you, and it is a, a promise for me. Thanks be to God. Amen.